Market News and we're here in Vienna attending European Blockchain Investment Congress 2019 and I'm here with Bruce Parter, basically pioneer of digital revolution. what can escalate trust in cryptocurrencies and blockchain as a technology because nowadays people have a lot of doubts well the, you know it's it's a it's a funny question right because first of all you have something that's immutable right if you did a transaction two or three years ago you can go back you can get that transaction and everybody knows it's not going to change so we also have the maybe we'll be able to record the history like this and everything else so you should trust it 100% but then on the other hand, of course, you have people taking advantage of the situation, trying to raise money or, or raising money and doing these types of things. And there's, you know, some quote unquote scams. But I um, want to backtrack just a little bit because a lot of the things that people say are scams, maybe these guys are actually trying to do the right thing, but it's very hard to succeed. Most startups fail. And so it doesn't mean that even if it ends up looking like a scam, that it was actually a scam and they were trying to scam everybody. Who even knows how much money they took? Um, but to have faith in the technology is, is what everyone should look at because that's what's going to carry us forward. I'm telling you, we're going to be able to record history, record uh, like voting. Like, how about that? I mean, how about a recount? A real recount. I voted in this one uh, years ago where we had the hanging chads in Florida. I voted and then they went back and they counted all the chads and the chads were hanging and everything and it was total baloney. Total baloney. Now if that was on the blockchain, we could have a recount, no problem, and it would be immutable. And it would be a real recount. And so really it's going to change everything moving forward and uh, make things a lot more trustworthy. But I think the problem is that uh, people try to like look into blockchain, try to understand the way it works, and they fail because it's, a, of course, a very complicated thing. So, so do they need to understand how it works? You don't need to understand it. It's fine. Think about a dollar bill or a hundred dollar bill, right? A US hundred or euro, whatever. It's got the strip going through, a magnetic strip. It's got some other stuff in here. It's got all these things in there that make it the bill that nobody needs to understand. But that's what makes it legitimate. So. We don't need to understand it. Do you think Bitcoin has already reached its very bottom or is there a way for it to recover? How high can it go or how low can it drop? Sure. Well, you know, for a guy like myself who's been in the space for so long, I was buying Bitcoins at $70. I was actually trading uh, Bitcoins for staffing services when it was like $70, $75. So I was really in the Bitcoins like 30 bucks, 40 bucks, you know. So for me, it's still very, very high. Now, that being said, the more people buy, the more value it's going to get. I just was on stage and I was talking uh, about how we were sitting there at dinner or lunch and I said, look at all those people down there, guys, and it's the beautiful streets of Vienna, right? Here at the European Blockchain Investment Congress. And we're looking at all those people and I said, not one of those people owns a Bitcoin. I bet you not one person owns a Bitcoin. Why? Because it's doomed. They don't know how to buy them. How do you know? It's hard to buy them. I don't know, but I would bet that at that moment, none of them owned a Bitcoin. And when those people, or even a fraction of a Bitcoin, but, but even if some of them own a fraction, I bet they don't own one. And so when you start to look at that and you say, okay, that's what's gonna kind of drive, drive the adoption. And I think I went off the question, what exactly was it again? So how low can it go? Or so I actually called it at 3,200 as we skidded across and I said, guys, this is the bottom. At 3200 I started buying again. So I felt like um, I wasn't the only one, and uh, most of us felt like that was the bottom. And Bo Paulney on stage said the same thing, 31, 22, or whatever it was, that's the bottom, and I agree. So I think we go up from here fairly fast. Uh, there will be some things that might keep us down, but once the big money comes in, no one's gonna want these little short plays they're not going to want people to be able to buy it at so cheap. So really, you should buy as much as you can now, whether it's Bitcoin or it's Litecoin or whatever it is, and that's your play. And it'll change your life, folks. It will change your life. This is our chance. Really, we have been controlled by the bankers. We've been controlled by these elites for so long. Think about all the wars. My country 
in the U.S., we, we're like a war country, right? I mean, we got the aircraft carriers, we got everybody, anybody calls, sure, we send in the bombs, right? It's huge business. They don't want to stop bombing people. I know these, I actually know the arms dealers, personally, many of them who come to the U.S. and sell the arms. Nobody wants it to stop. And we have an opportunity to take back some of this power and to take some of this wealth with this immutable source, which is the blockchain. Why do you think small countries like Malta, for example, or Switzerland are not afraid to promote the industry of blockchain and cryptocurrencies? They hold events, they implement laws. But on the other hand, if we look at the US, which is a huge country, a really influential one, if we look at China or South Korea, the steps are really minor compared to those tiny countries. Why is that? Well, certainly because they have nothing to lose, right? They have nothing to lose. And uh, in the U.S., we have the dollar, and the dollar is the world currency. Our Congress, they get together, and they decide that they're going to fund something, and they say, okay, boom, we're funding it. And they just go print the dollars, and that's it, and they just print them. There is no, like, oh, wait, we don't have enough money. No, it's approved, print the money. And that's actually another thing, not to mention Bo again, but another thing Bo Pauling was saying. And actually Kent Christensen, who's another friend of mine, a billionaire, says the same thing. We are very close to a big economic meltdown. And it's, it's going to be, I agree, it'll be pretty major. Right now, we've printed so much money. We've sent trillions of dollars. They don't even have the serial numbers on them to Iraq to just pay off the warlords and everything else. And it's not tied to anything. It's not tied to anything. So when that starts to happen, it's, it's gonna be really something else. And again, blockchain technology, Bitcoin, Litecoin, Global Boost, Batcoin. These, these companies that are around, are probably Ethereum as well, um, are gonna go through the roof. In your presentation, you spoke about uh, decentralized exchanges and you said that they're able to um, excite new investors. But uh, actually, experienced traders uh, are not always ready to use DEX. So what is your take on that? Well, you know, it's kind of a funny thing, right? Because uh, a lot of people will say that I am totally wrong and that centralized exchanges are the future. But in order for us to move this space forward, it cannot be the future. The centralized exchange can't be the future, in my opinion. Uh, we need all of these types of trades in different places. Now, the one thing I was talking about with the decentralized exchange was specifically with safety bit. And with this safety bit, Tom Perry, who's here, uh, he's gonna speak again tomorrow, what he has done is basically, uh, and he's an ex-naval intelligence officer who has also taken apart uh, different banking machines and back ends of everything else. And so what he's done is basically you have the internet and you have the web. And the internet doesn't need the web to operate, but the web is where we have all the vulnerabilities. So there's like hundreds of vulnerabilities that come out a month and there's no way you're gonna keep up with them. And if you have a centralized exchange, you're basically, it's not if, it's when. You have a hacker who has nothing better to do than go after that hundred and something million dollars in there. And he can work all day and all night at it for a year or two years until he finds a vulnerability. And there's really no way because you're, as, as a web, you're always reactive. You're, the threat comes up, you try to stop it. The threat comes up, you're not, it's impossible. And so what safety bit does is he takes that away. And it's actually the same way the NASDAQ operates. And it's not on the web. The exchange is not on the web and it has its own messaging system uh, that goes back and forth. And I think this uh, is going to propel us forward. So thank you so much for your time, Bruce. It's been a pleasure. For awesome. Thank you.